Welcome back to the Primal Subscriber Trail. This is a mountain bike trail in my backyard where each week I let my subscribers vote on what gets built and then I build and ride it. The trail is primal because I choose not to use any power tools or metal fasteners like screws, bolts, or nails. On the last episode, we built tons of rollers, a jump, and did some environmental art. And after that, I asked you guys to vote between a roller to whale type feature thing and a flowy dirt section. And the vote wasn't even close with the whale feature taking 76% of your guys' vote. So, in this episode, we'll be building what I consider my most ambitious project to date, and definitely, definitely my favorite by far. Ooh, watch out! All right, we are out here on day one of this build, and uh, as always, the first thing we gotta do is clear out all the honeysuckle and the dead stuff that is in our line of path. Relatively easy through here, just a bunch of honeysuckle, but let's get to clearing it. Clearing out dense sections of woods like this is always a great idea, no matter what your motive. Not only does it help prevent the risk of wildfires, but it also helps restore the nutrients to the ground, and the more time you spend in the woods, you'll be able to identify native plant species like morel mushrooms, or invasive plant species like honeysuckle that can and should be pulled. That's insane. If you ever need water, Cut a freaking vine, holy, I've never seen that. I gotta try it. Yeah, it's just, oh, nope. Oh, nope. <laughs> that tastes all right. <laughs> After taste testing vines and getting everything removed, I went ahead and burned a few small piles of some remaining wet leaves and honeysuckle. And then I got to work planning where I wanted the dirt roller to go that would get us into the whale feature. All right, so it's all mapped out now. I can start to actually bring in some dirt and that means skid steer time for me because since we're going like four or five feet high, this is gonna be a lot of dirt. Um, but anyway, let's go grab the skid steer and we can start putting down some dirt. Now just like last time, I'll be donating $200 to Team Trees for any day that I use the skid steer to keep the primal trail as primal as possible. <laughs> and if you want to join me, just donate under the team Backyard Trail Builds and I'll show everyone who donates on the next episode I use the skid steer in. Anyway, now that I had all the dirt where it needed to be, I could start shaping this thing into something rideable. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and try and get most of this dirt off the base of this tree because if I don't, that will actually rot the tree and kill it eventually. I don't know how long that process takes, but we should be able to get it pretty cleaned off. Okay, <laughs> so today, since it's raining out, we're gonna try and like really do some some prettying up of this roller that we made yesterday. Um, haven't ever done this really. I did it one other time, but it was on some really small jumps, never to this extent with uh, the trowel and little concrete working tools. So kind of excited. I, I always forget how much I like working with dirt. And yeah, I'm excited to see how, how clean we can get this thing looking. But uh, yeah. Let's um, see what we can do here.
For my first time, like really trying to shape with dirt, super stoked with that result. Um, yeah, so happy with that. But now, now we get to move on to the really, really fun part, the woodworking part. For the wooden part of this feature, we first had to do a little bit of hunting because we needed two large curved trees so that the structure would act as a landing and a ramp. And I actually knew where one was already, so we snagged that one. And after looking around for a half hour or so, I found the holy grail of trees for this project. So this is the perfect tree for this. We've got exact curve that we need. It's nice and thick. And technically, we're not killing this tree because this is two in one, it's a twofer. So we're gonna take this guy, leave the other one, and it's good to go. It's like taking an arm and then it survives. Uh, but yeah, let's chop it down. Getting both trees cleaned up, moved by the project, and debarked, I got an invite from my pal Nate to some property that we could take a good amount of cedar from. This was perfect timing too because I needed really tall and semi-thick trees since I was cutting my own deck boards. It was a great spot too because the woods here were super dense with just cedar, so we could easily take some and you wouldn't even know we were there. But since it was so dense, it made dropping the trees super challenging. So. We had to turn to more dangerous and dumb methods for pulling things down. Keep getting stuck. But first, let me tell you how to get 15% off a bike rack just like this one. U-Haul is a huge supporter of this trail series, so they're giving anyone who watches 15% off their giant selection of bike racks. All you need to do is go to uhaul.com and find yourself an awesome bike rack. Then at checkout, enter the code BTB in all caps. And now I can show you the dumb stuff, like this. Here we've tied a giant rock to a rope and we're trying to lasso the tree. Ooh, watch out, Jesus criminy. But when that doesn't work, Nate decides he's going to climb the tree just to toss the rock over. <laughs> now this actually ended up working, but only because Nate has about 10 years or more of rock climbing experience under his belt. Oh yeah, beautiful, look at that. That's a double high five, friend. Oh! What? Anyway, <laughs> after collecting more than enough trees, I headed back to the house to start splitting the logs into deck boards. To split boards from logs this size, I start by sawing them to the width I want for my decking, which in this case is three feet. Then I'll wedge down the center to get a good clean split right through the middle. <laughs> After that, I take a tool called a fro and hammer it into one end of the piece. From here, I can pry on my fro, which allows me to control the split that happens, and after a bit of finagling, you'll end up with a nice clean deck board. There we go. Now, this can be one of the most rewarding parts of the building process, considering we are turning a log into dimensional lumber with just a few hand tools. But if you've got logs with lots of knots in them, it can quickly become a nightmare and they will not split the way you want them to. But since I was picky about what trees I took, I was able to split all the boards in one day and get our post for the project debarked. And just like that, I had all the decking, posts, and runners cut for this project. All sustainably taken and completely done by hand. So now all we gotta do is put it together. Easy, right? <laughs> Wrong. For starters, some holes I dug the day before to put our posts in filled up with water after a rain. So I had to take all of that out first, but then I was able to line up the curve piece and get the other posts in. To kick this thing off, I started with the larger curved piece because it had the perfect bend to it and I wanted to assemble it exactly as it was. So to do this, I got our posts in the ground and cut a brittle joint for the first post. This type of joint allows me some free play if I need to move the log around at all, so I used it to get me started. After that, I cut two mortise and tenon joints for the middle and last posts. 
A mortise and tenon joint is about as strong as you can get when it comes to building structures. And these two are also pretty simple to cut in principle, but I won't go into detail on that here. If you'd like me to go into more depth on the wood joinery I use, let me know in the comments and maybe we can do a video on that separately. But for the sake of this video, I'll explain it all as making holes and making things that fit into said holes. So here's a quick time lapse of me doing just that. side done we could pretty much mimic the same thing on the other side and that's pretty much what I did I got my post set up carved another brittle joint in the first post all right But that's about where I had to stop and do things a little bit differently because the curve on this side did not match the other side, like huh. at all. So I had to use all brittle joints for each post, which obviously isn't the annoying part. What sucked was I had to ratchet strap the log down to the post in the middle and simply pray that it wouldn't snap in half or else I'd have to find another one. And as far as another one goes, there weren't any other ones, so this had to work. <laughs> and with that looming over my shoulders, I cut the last joint and started ratcheting it in, hoping for the best. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this works. Duck. Awesome. Thank God. Huh? We freaking did it! Getting that peg in there was such a relief. You have no idea. Anyway, after getting that done, all that was left was to peg the other side and clean up the stringers so we could start decking this thing. Okay, so I've never seen this done before. I don't know if anybody has any desire to do this because of the, how long it will take. But what we're gonna do for the decking is drill holes through the decking and through the structure just a little bit and we're gonna sink dowels into this so the entire structure is completely made of wood yes you heard right <laughs> and I'm sure some of you might be saying that won't work the boards will easily be able to pop off and I don't blame you for thinking that way but I'm happy to inform you you're absolutely 100% wrong This feature turned out amazing, and I still need your guys' help to vote on what comes next, but sadly, I couldn't finish all the boards if I was going to get this video out on time. But for your viewing pleasure, I did place the other boards on as if they were done so you could get a look at what's to come. And for those of you who can't believe that the dowels would hold the boards down at all, here's the best I can do for you. Okay, I just want to show you guys. It's been a couple days since we did a few of these deck pieces, and like, it's so solid. <laughs> it's like I can't. Ah! That's literally all of my might. Like, let's try one side. 
That's me trying just one side. <laughs> so next time, we'll finish up the decking, but then we also need to build a landing. So I need you guys to decide on whether we build the landing completely out of dirt or we do a half and half. Build the case pad part out of wood and the landing part out of dirt. We'll say option one is full dirt and option two is half and half. Click the link here to vote on that or head on over to my website at backyardtrailbuilds.com slash vote. This feature is seriously by far my favorite of all of the things I've ever made. And I cannot wait to ride it on the next Primal Trail video. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you at the next build.